This is the uh, webinar uh, part one in a, a three-part webinar in a four-step process in how to navigate the COVID-19 crisis, but any crises of that sort. And in today's uh, webinar, we will be touching in depth with the emotional mastery and emotional uh, literacy. This is a very quick agenda for today. We'll go through introductions, the context and the objectives. We'll go in depth with the emotional mastery. We'll touch point on a grounding, uh, reassessment, planning, uh, actions, uh, because we will be covering these uh, topics in depth in webinar part two and part three. And then we'll have a wrap up in action and a designated uh, uh, space for uh, questions and answers. However, feel free to ask your questions during the chat box and Diego will kindly moderate uh, those, uh, those questions. So as I mentioned, make sure you have a notebook or a paper, uh, a pen or a pencil, uh, your full in uninterrupted attention. Uh, we know that the thing with these uh, webinars is uh, we tend to zone out and we tend to multitask. If you want to take the real benefit from uh, and value from this webinar, it's very important that you focus on, on, on where we are. As a result, we have created this webinar very interactive. So your interactivity is highly uh, appreciated. And big smile. This webinar is for people who are seeking to acknowledge and adapt to the new changes in home and in their work, and usually are the people from a uh, business uh, setting. So most of you that are on the call uh, today. So let's start our webinar with a mindfulness practice. So I invite you guys to please sit comfortably, Close your eyes, making sure both of your feet are firmly on the ground, your back straight, without creating any tension in your back. Make sure your neck and your head is aligned with your back. And as you feel comfortable in your seat, start bringing your attention to the quality of your breathing. With each breath, try to make your breathing more and more deep. Start bringing your attention to the movements that your body makes as you take in the air and you as you take out the air. The movements of your chest and the movements of your belly. If a thought comes, slowly bring back your attention to the quality of your breathing. I would like to bring your attention slowly to the tip of your nose and the sensation of freshness when you take in the air and the sensation of warmth when you take out the air. If a noise distracts you, if a thought is present, with a big smile and gently bring your full attention to the sensation of the tip of your nose.
Slowly extend your attention to the sensations inside of your nose and in your throat as the air passes in and out. Let go of any thoughts. Slowly and gently pick your right hand and put your palm where your heart is. Try to find the beatings of your heart. In order to do that, you may have to adjust the pressure of your hand or move your hand to find the right place to feel the beating of your heart. Bring your attention to the beating of your heart. Let go of any thoughts. Now slowly remove your hand. Take three deep breaths. And on the third breath, very gently open your eyes and come back to the webinar. And when you're back, just write in the chat box, I am back. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank yourself for the quality of your meditation and forgive yourself for those many times that a thought or an emotion or a distraction came. That is quite normal when we do meditation, that the thoughts and the emotions or distractions will come. And we put a big smile and we come back to the, to the meditation. Okay, guys, let's start with a journaling exercise. Meaning that you take your notebook or your paper and you journal about the answers to these questions in silence. So what are some of the emotions that you have been experiencing in the past few days? How would you like to feel after this webinar? What would be some of your superhero powers? So if you were a superhero, uh, what would be your superhero power? One thing you're grateful for, you're thankful for today at this very moment. And what are some of your goals or objectives for this webinar? What do you want to leave this webinar with? So we're going to give you a, a couple of minutes, like two, 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 three minutes. So uh, Diego, you can do the the timekeeping for us, please. Sure. Thank you. And Diego, you can bring back your, your, uh, uh, your image as well so that we can see you. <laughs> Wonderful. Choose the three minutes. Yeah. And whoever who is, uh, done, they can write in the chat box done.
Okay. Whatever you have written, I think it's good and you will have the opportunity to finish it up after, after the webinar. So we'll slowly uh, move on. Yeah, two minutes now. Two minutes now. Mm -hmm. Wonderful, wonderful. So what do you guys want out of this webinar uh, today? And you can answer that in the chat. And as the answers come in, I would ask kindly uh, uh, Diego to let us and share with us what our people are typing as uh, the, the desired outcomes for this webinar or what, what are the goals uh, people would like to leave this webinar with. And I'll be taking notes as well. We got to get on with activities, redefining path have control over my emotions and not my emotions have control over me, getting focused and calm, how to be productive, insights and tools, tools how to stay positive and productive during these days. Um, mm -hmm. a, remind, a reminder on the tools I know, but I lost track of. Spend some quality time and get back on track. Yes, we all want to get back on track. To feel connected with a larger community, aligned and lifted, tools to manage emotion and emotions and workload, ability to focus and complete tasks, be more confident and peaceful, that I'm not the only one experience those these feelings, you're definitely not alone. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Back to mental and soul harmony, clarity of mind. Wow. More accepting of going with the flow in this weird time, yes. Wonderful, energy. wonderful. Beautiful, beautiful. Find comfort, support, tricks to help go through this crisis. Thank you. Thank you very Thank much. You. Yes. Oh, wow. There's so much intelligence. There's so much inspiration in this room. So uh, we hope that and we attempt to, uh, to, uh, to get most of these. And yes, we, we also share these sentiments uh, with you as well. Okay, so let's, let's discuss a little bit about the uh, today's context. So, so what is it happening right now? What's going on? So, I mean, you can type it in the in the chat box. And uh, what is the current uh, context? And as the answers comes in, I would ask uh, Diego to uh, to share that with us. Of course. Mm -hmm. Pandemonium, um, mm -hmm. isolation and uncertainty to a level none of us has, uh, have experienced before. Worldwide global health pandemic. Yes. Hell is freezing over. Disruption. <laughs> <laughs> Unprecedented times and reality. Yes. yes. Uncertainty, community yeah. coming together during an unprecedented time of crisis. Yes. Yes. Uh, we are used to feel 100% control over the situation. While it's not caused, the diversions for 100 control is destabilizing us. Very unprepared for all changes, chaos, blizzard blowing in my mind and soul. Major disruption of worldwide economy. Yes. Living something that will have both physical and mental impacts on the entire population of the world. Yeah. It yeah. has using over some people are finally going to have sex <laughs> okay <laughs> wonderful wonderful yes yes absolutely, absolutely today is my sixth week from home from a hospital and relative isolation looking forward to do this whole thing being over yes yes absolutely so there's a lot of uncertainty there's a lot of doubt there's there's self-isolation there are concerns around health and the health of the of the loved ones there's a lot of concerns around finances about money uh stock markets are, are going down people are being laid off uh, a lot of people have their uh contracts canceled um th 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 there is a lot of there's a lot 
there is a lot uh, there is a lot of uh, uh, things that are that are going on and 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 this type of uh, uh, uncertainty and doubt stuff will lead into anxiety and those anxieties will lead into fear and those fear will move us into the panic mode and when you're in, in the panic mode we're not thinking clearly and we're making rash decisions or we're getting into actions or inactions we might overreact we might underreact so it's not a it's not a very good uh, situation it's really the the, the, the uh, panic uh, uh, moment. Here, here's the good news. Here's the good news for you. It starts with you and it's going to end with you. Regardless what's happening exterior to you, regardless what are the external factors, everything starts with you and ends with you. And the reason for it is because you are a naturally creative resourceful and whole being you have all the creativity you have all the resources that are available uh, to you it's about how you can tap in to those uh, creativity and resourcefulness and confidence and calm i would like to one thing that you would leave this 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 webinar with is that you are resilient you are confident and you're calm and how to actually tap into that resiliency that confidence and that uh calmness uh so th 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 there is a story here there's this uh, uh concept we call it the stockdale uh, uh, concept stockdale was a u.s pilot uh, in the uh we Vietnam War and his plane was shot down and he was a prisoner of war in North Vietnam for seven years and uh, he was uh, mentioning uh, that there were a lot of people that were either in denial and uh, were, were letting things go and they were completely in action and they were letting the, the things to uh, uh, take its course and there were a lot of people that were in the uh, wishful thinking and uh, a fool's dream and stuff and neither of those groups uh, survived. They the people, including himself, who survived, they had to do and must do two things. And in order for us, in order for you to be able to navigate any crisis, especially this crisis, there's two things you need to do. You need fa to, to face this challenge heads on. So you cannot avoid it. You cannot um, let it uh, run its course. So you need to be proactive and you need to really face it. And you need to believe that you can figure it out. This is, again, this is not about wishful thinking. This is not about a negative, uh, uh, a toxic positivity. This is not, this is, this is about the fact that you have this faith inside yourself, that you have the, the resources that you can figure things out. So these two things you need to, you need to do. So, Hopefully, uh, at the end of this uh, this uh, this webinar or this webinar series, you will come up with this uh, feeling of serenity and calm and optimism, and not necessarily fool's dream or fool's uh, uh, positivity. That you feel the confidence that you are in charge, not necessarily in control, but you are in charge. You are in charge of your emotions. You are in charge of your uh, de destiny, and you can exude this confidence to to others, to your loved ones, to your partners, to your coworkers. To your colleagues, to your friends, and you're able to manage your emotions with an emotional literacy and emotional mastery, and you feel that you're grounded and focused and less uh, uh, distracted. At the end of the day, what we are trying to answer, and this is an inquiry question, inquiry question are those type of questions that we are not able to answer them right away are those type of questions that we need maybe a few days a few uh, weeks to to ponder about and to journal about and to uh to 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 write about and that question is who am i being at times of crisis and uncertainty what are my emotions? What are my actions? So this is, if you want to take a screenshot of this uh, uh, screen, do that. This webinar, the series of webinar, and in the few next weeks, though that is the, the, the uh, question that we would like to answer for uh, ourselves. So again, um, I have put together from different uh, sources a, a four-step 
uh, process that will guide us through uh, navigating uh, this this times of uh, of crisis. Me being a, a, a ex engineer and having a lot of uh, engineer people in in uh, in our group, I like working a lot with businesses and entrepreneurs and stuff. So I put things in in the structure. So in this webinar, I'm gonna give you an overall view of this four step process and we're going to dig deep in the uh, first part of the process which is the emotional mastery in the second part of the webinar we'll talk about grounding in details and in the third part of the webinar um, we will talk about the reassessment planning and uh, creative action so uh, step number one is about taking control of our uh, emotions, emotional mastery, understanding our emotions, observing our emotions. Today, we're gonna really dig deep. Uh, step number two, get grounded. Understand what are the mindset we, uh, we are in. Under accept the reality as it is. Understand what we control, what we don't uh, co uh, control. And take the mindset and take the perspective that is gonna be able to uh, serve us. Step number three is the reassessment and, and planning. So whatever assessments and plannings we had in the past, there is no more. So we have to answer certain questions about our current situation. And ideally, we want, what we want to get from step three is have this helicopter view of, of everything that are working and, and make the decisions and make those uh, uh, planning that is going to really help us uh, through this, uh, help us guide our, our actions. And step four is how to tap in in our creativity and our innovation and also critical thinking once we are not emotionally uh, attached once we are grounded once we have seen things as as what they are and in their ground uh, as their uh, uh, big picture uh, what type of actions we will put ourselves in so this is the overall of the four step process and without further ado let's get into the uh, emotional literacy and emotional uh, mastery part. Okay. First question. At this very moment, what are some of the emotions that you feel? And you can type that in the chat box. And as, as the answers will come, I'll ask Diego to uh, say them loud. And again, because I come from an engineering background and work with a lot of business people, uh, sometimes we have difficulty naming our emotions. So this is what we call the wheel of emotions. It will help you uh, position yourself, position your emotion and name your emotions in that, in that circle. This is something I work uh, very often with my, with my coaching clients. We have a few emotions here, annoyance, yes. Frustrated yeah, yeah. and alone, yeah. hopelessness, despair mm -hmm. to innovate, FOMO, fear of missing out. At the moment, calm, yeah. but uh, but very from fear to despair, anticipation, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. boredom, uh, yeah. distracted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anxiety, sadness, boredom, distraction, yeah. confused overwhelmed yes 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 yeah yeah remorse Wonderful. joy appreciation appreciate apprehension uh calm anxiety anxiety boredom yeah yeah wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> name your emotion is like wine tasting you try to put words on what comes out <laughs> wonderful. wonderful thank you thank Sadness. you yeah, yeah. Thank you everyone for sharing your emotions. That's, 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 that's actually a wonderful exercise to uh, check in with ourselves. What is the emotion that is, that is present? So at these times, as, as, you can as you have mentioned, there are a lot of strong emotions. There's those uh, fear, anxiety, apprehension, um, panic, uh, terror. Uh, they, they, and what happens is um, our uh, reptile brain, amygdala, that is where the emotions resolve, get hijacked uh, by, this, uh, by these emotions. So uh, all the uh, stuff that has to go to our logical brain 
does not go there. Our amygdala is hijacked. Our, that is what we call um, emotional hijacking. We get into the uh, uh, fight uh, and flight and, and freeze uh, mode. That is what we call we are now drowned in that emotion. So three things could happen. Either we get in the fight mode, and the fight mode is like resisting. Or oh, I don't, I don't accept this. I don't. I want to go back to the uh, to the normal that that I I, I was. You know, um, you get into uh, overreacting. You get on the you know the really the high gear, and and you you you're very hyper vigilant. You want you want to like you know fix things, and you want to do things, and you you're really really in that fight mode. And sometimes those uh, uh, you're not thinking clearly, obviously. And sometimes those uh, actions or decisions might not be good that is when you know sometimes we uh, hit somebody in the face from the anger that we shouldn't have or write that email uh, that we shouldn't have so that's the, the, the fight mode. the flight mode is the other so we want to flee we want to escape we want to we want to we, we don't want it you know like it doesn't it doesn't affect me it doesn't bother me i will i'll let things you know uh, go its course I, I don't have to take any action i don't so it takes you in the underreacting and it takes you not not um, making decisions uh, or making action that that is going to be serving you. And also, there is another thing that could happen is that frozen mode. So you're not overreacting, you're not underreacting, you're just doing nothing. That's the time you're fixed on your screen and 24 hours you're watching the news. That is the, that is the time you're in denial. You're in apathy. You're like, I don't care. You're like, you're numb. There's a numbness going. There's an indifference uh, uh, that, that, is, that, is, that, that, that is going there. So if you are emotionally hijacked, you're not thinking clearly. This is not the time for action because everything that is reactive. This is not the time, a good time, because the decisions that you're making are not good. They're not, they're not uh, serving uh, type of decisions. Uh, a little bit education ar ar around education and uh, around emotions as well is, so sometimes we are very much drowned in the emotions, but also it will happen that we will actively numb ourselves and suppress our emotions not to feel anything that happens a lot with business people and, and, and engineers uh, as well they were say, no, no 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 i don't want to feel anything i don't want to feel anything. i'm I, I don't feel angry i don't feel fear so you're denying those emotions so that 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 also could could very much um, happen um, also there, there's a question here do we have negative and positive emotions uh, society tells us when growing up we are always been told that anger is bad uh, sadness is bad um, I don't know fear is bad but joy is good um, uh, I don't know love is good uh, trust is good um, yes and no Here, here's how I differentiate with that all emotions are good in, in the way that they are the vehicles to pass uh, information to us, to teach us about ourselves. Next time when you are angry, I implore you to uh, a little bit get deeper. What made you angry? Why you're angry? I guarantee you that's going to connect you with a value of yourself that was not respected. Example you have a uh, appointment with a friend, the friend is late, you get mad, why? Probably punctuality is a good value of you. So that anger gave you some information about yourself that punctuality is a value of you. Or maybe respect is a value of you and respect for time is a value of you. And that friend you felt that didn't respect your time. Maybe keeping the promises is a value of you. So that feeling of anger brought you a lot of information about yourself so in that sense all emotions are good feeling them are good but watch me if you are feeling sad right now it's okay you're feeling sad but you're feeling sad tomorrow and you're feeling sad the day after and you're feeling sad then you're depressed then that's you not that's not an emotion you have uh, gone in the state of depression 
that is not good. So there are certain emotions we don't want to attach to them. We don't want to feel it that way. If you're feeling angry right now because something happened, that's great. But if you're feeling angry every day and every time, then you're a hateful person and you, that, that, that has become your, your state. That is how I differentiate between negative and positive. It's not about the emotion itself. It's the state you, in which you get in, into that. Also, always we have this uh, brain of ours. We are homo sapiens. We have this very intelligent brain. It's great. It's good when we want to do problem solve. It's good when we want to analyze. It's good when we are focusing on something. The other times we don't need this brain. And this brain becomes a constant chatter that we are eating. It's like, you know, uh, trying to remind us about the uh, uh, things that are coming in the future. Uh, it's going to remind us about the bad ex uh, experiences we had in the past and constantly trying to take us either in the future or take us in the past. And once that has happened, those thoughts will create emotions as well. So our th thoughts can also create emotions of anxiety, of fear, of uh, shame, of guilt, of uh, all sorts of uh, emotions. That's we call that that constant uh, mental uh, chatter. So. Inquiry question for you. We we'll try to answer a little bit in the chat box today as well, but also it's an inquiry question. It's very good to get a list of some of the triggers for your thoughts and for your emotions. Um, examples could be, you know, uh, I get very anxious when I'm constantly uh, watching this negative news. You know, uh, some people get very <laughs> frustrated when they see somebody is driving slow and they are, they are stuck behind it. Not me, but some people do that. So very quickly, because this is a big question, this is an inquiry question, what are some of triggers for your emotions? And Diego, you could share some of these. Yeah. Thinking of the future or listening to the news. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Injustice. Yeah, injustices. Yeah. yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. So we'll move on, but it's very good to to make a list of that because then you would you would foresee the situations in which you you know that you're gonna get hijacked and the emotions gonna uh, gonna come. So. What are some of the ways you manage your emotions? And you can type in the, in the chat box. So we'll give you like a good uh, 30 seconds. What are some of the ways you manage your emotions? Yoga and breathing, very yes. good way. Rationalization, thinking happy, Sorry, happy what was thoughts. the last one? Sorry, Rationalization, yes. letting it go. Let it go, yeah. Thinking ha happy thoughts, physical physical activity, meditate mm -hmm. daily, mindfulness. Wow, yes, we have a great uh, list. Wow, yeah. what a wealth of what a wealth of information and knowledge. Wonderful, wonderful, very good. And you're right. Some of the uh, some of the ideas you will see here as well. But number one, breathe. So the first line of defense is just breathe. And you can take a screenshot of this uh, image as well in some of the ways you can manage your emotions. But we're gonna do an exercise together. So we're gonna do an exercise together here. So I want you to pick one of those emotions that you're feeling right now. And I'm gonna walk you through a couple of these uh, uh, exercises. So if you've picked your emotion, just say uh, yes in the chat box. Okay. So I want you to take a deep breath. Acknowledge the emotion. So without fighting it, without just acknowledge that I am feeling, I'm feeling something. Without judgment, without denial. You don't have to say it's a good feeling or a bad feeling, it doesn't matter. There is a feeling, there's something happening in my body. 
Now try to name the emotion. Is it sadness? Is it anxiety? Is that fear? Naming the emotions 50% of the work done. Now, let's do a quick mindfulness repetition. Close your eyes. Pick two of your fingers, rub them against the other. With the tension that you can feel the ridges of your fingers. If a thought comes, let go of thoughts. Just observe the emotion and the sensation of your two fingertips. And you can come back. That's it. That's it. And there are many different type of this type of mindfulness repetitions. Just doing that allows you to come out of that hijacking of the emotion. And the next exercise, and you will take it for home, observe what information that emotion shared with you. Just a note, this only works with, you know, smaller emotions, softer emotions. If it's a traumatized emotion, if it's the health of a loved one, um, they may not work. At that time, you may need probably some process coaching, emotional coaching, or even, even uh, therapy. Understand that, you know, if you get an angry email from a, a colleague, you can do this exercise. But if it's something that's a bigger, this exercise might not be uh, good enough. So take a screenshot of this. This is going to be your inquiry. What did you notice about yourself while observing your emotions? Okay. So quick summary uh, about emotional hijacking. We understand what it is. What are some of our triggers for our emotions and thoughts? We know the, the steps when it, we get hijacked, how to come out of that hijack. And remember, breathe, breathe. So things to do, breathe, checking with your emotions every now and then, whenever you wake up, whenever you go to bed, whenever you start a meeting, do those steps in emotional management, do mindset uh, reps, you know, this thing, you can do it every day. You can do it anytime, every day and try to answer all the uh, inquiries. Uh, as far as the coaching tools that are available to you, there are guided mindfulness and meditation that could help you a lot. There's the process coaching, emotional coaching. You can uh, reach out to me. And also, uh, I'm going to go do a webinar in mindfulness at, at, at work, how to bring this at work. There are certain books here. I'm not going to go through that uh, too much, but there's a book about mindfulness, very good. Uh, the book uh, by uh, Eckhart Tolle, Power of Now, uh, wonderful. Anything around social and emotional intelligence are all uh, good stuff. So this brings us to the uh, end of part one, which is the emotional mastery. I'm going very quickly on part two, three, and four. Remember that in webinar, part two, we'll be talking about grounding. In webinar, part three, we're going to talk about step three and four. Uh, very high level in grounding it's about putting a pulse we cannot be going fast unless we slow down we need to slow down in order to go fast so put a pause that's number one uh, the idea here is we will be exploring together what is the mindset we got stuck in um, what, what are saboteurs what is the saboteur land what is the gremlins what is haunting us um, how to accept the reality as it is, answering the questions of what we control, what we don't control. So this, all of these are going to be in webinar part two. And once we answer this, uh, this question, to make the shift, make the shift from a controller to a sailor and um, 
attempting to answer who am I being in the times of crisis and, and uncertainty. Tap in in our inner sage, inner leader, inner Jedi, whatever you want to call it. That, that we'll, we'll talk about that. List our resources. What is available to us? What, is, what, is, what, what do we have? And uh, how would uh, operating from a space of strength, value, and passion uh, will, will guide us? For webinar part three, step three and step four, it's about reassessing and replanning. It's about being able now that we are not emotionally hijacked, now that we are grounded, now we look at the big picture of things. Now we look at the helicopter view. We'll look into what are some of the risks and vulnerabilities. You know, ask the questions, my finances, how long it's, that's going to uh, allow me uh, to last. Make some decisions. What do I keep? What do I not keep? What do I do? What do I not do? Do I need that gym uh, subscription? Do I need that, I don't know, uh, STM subscription um, or no? We assess and analyze uh, everything, but from space. Of, of mindfulness, from a space of, of, of groundedness, not from a space of, of, of hijacking. And we look at our visions and goals and we'll make simple and small plans. There's a business version of this too that I'll do differently for business, but for you guys will be the individual version that we'll do in the webinar part three. And in webinar part three, step four, we'll uh, try to look, uh, because this, this, this situation ha it has put us a lot of new problems, a lot of new issues that need to be resolved. So how can we tap into our problem solving and, and be able to uh, solve this problem, find, find, find solutions, you know, uh, with uh, working virtually? What are some of the solutions we can put? Also, how can we tap into our creativity and innovation to address the challenges that are faced to us and also to our business, to our team, to our organization and to our, uh, to our community? How get out of that inaction and binge watching uh, Netflix and, and, and uh, frozen on the news uh, channel into, into taking actions? and how to uh, uh, leverage our instincts and intuition to guide us uh, through uh, these uh, times. What is our why and how are we gonna communicate this why? Keep things simple, stupid. <laughs> uh, and how we can iterate uh, quickly, create daily habits, reclaim our agenda, and design our ideal days, even though uh, the, the challenges that are there, and understanding that in this time and, and, and space, human imagination is the number one resource uh, that, that we need. So that's the, the uh, uh, webinar, webinars part two and, and part three. So let's get into the wrap up and the homework. We have a few uh, uh, minutes. Understand, it's not gonna be easy, and trade-offs, those decisions are gonna to be tough, but know that you are resilient. And whenever you forget that you're resilient, these are the three questions you will ask. Take a screen capture of this. These are very amazing inquiry uh, questions. You know, despite what is happening now, right now, in what ways I'm still okay? Uh, whatever I'm struggling with, what helps me to live through it? What is, that is my essence that can never be taken from me. Okay, so take a screenshot of this and we'll work on, on that. Remember, gratefulness, self-affirmations, mindfulness, serving from your hearts, helping other people, supporting all other people are the antidotes to fear and, and doubt. And you are not alone. Get help from friends, from coaches, from colleagues, from, from, your, from your community. Queer Tech community is here uh, uh, for you guys. Some stuff to do. This, these are good times for introspection and self-reflection. What is really important in life uh, for me? Please do all the inquiry questions. They're very, very powerful uh, questions. Invest in your personal uh, uh, development and self-discovery and position yourself uh, for, for, for the future, reach out. And as far as I am concerned, I am here for you guys. Pick up the phone, let's chat, let's find out what is, what is it you're struggling with and how can I 
uh, support you. I would love to, uh, to hear from you. And uh, will your colleagues also benefit from this webinar? If that's the case, please contact me and we'll arrange so that this webinar can be given at your uh, workplaces. And on that note, I'll uh, move to Diego with, uh, I think, uh, five minutes, five, six minutes of questions and answers yes. and feedback. So we will take a couple of questions. Sorry if your questions are not answered. Uh, you can still type it in. Diego will capture uh, the, those questions. And if your question is not answered, reach out to me. I will answer that. Yes, guys, feel free to, to, reach, uh, to reach out to our chat and Mazdaq will be happy to answer your questions. Thank you for coming. Um, okay. Feedback too. If you have any feedback for us, uh, things we could do, we, we could have done differently. We can do differently for the next uh, uh, two parts to, of the webinar. Feel free to, uh, to, to. We have a question here. The process yes. you described, breathing and knowledge, etc. Et by doing this, we're forcing our brain to move from the emotional part to the rational part. Not necessarily rational part. We are forcing. Uh, we're not forcing anything. We, we are uh, ridding ourselves from being hijacked by those strong emotions. So we are ridding ourselves from that fight, flight, freeze mode and in a more neutral way. Not necessarily into our, into our intellectual uh, brain, but in a neutral mode that we are not in that uh, animal hijacked uh, mode. Yeah. Great question. Would there be some good micro rituals to increase our emotional awareness? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, every time you wake up in the morning, check in with yourself. What, go in your body, not in your head. What, what my body feels right now. Every time you want to start a meeting, either ask the a participant or ask yourself, how am I feeling in this meeting? Uh, before going to bed, ask that. Anytime uh, you read like an email uh, that is not very uh, pleasant, uh, you have a conversation, ask yourself, well, what's going on? What, what am I feeling right now? Why is it that I have, I'm having this conversation with this person, but something is off. I'm feeling something here. Yeah, very good. Very good idea. Um, is there, is that, is there not power in those emotions that can be that that can be channeled? Is there a way to channel those emotions? The, the power. If there is no power in those emotions that can be channeled. So what what you're doing? You're taking the power from them by being drowned in them, and you're looking at them as if they were external to you. The the uh, analogy I say it's let's say your anger is a very uh, a violent a river you could be inside of that and trying to struggle so you are angry you're drowning in that emotion by doing that exercise what you do you remove yourself from the power of anger you are an observant on the bank on the coast of the river and you're letting that uh, um, flow learning that that violent uh, flow to go and you're just observing and you're trying to find out what emotion uh, what information they are uh, giving to you once you're in that then there would be opportunities that how can i channel the information i got from this into something that will serve me example uh, Martha Luther King, you know, uh, civil rights movements, LGBT movements, they all come from anger because there were injustices and people got really angry. But instead of people getting really angry and burning things and being drowned in that, they channeled the information and they put their work into bringing um, equality, bringing social justice, making, making the work. Uh, the work I'm doing here is coming from anger. It's an anger that, oh, there's not enough resources available to people uh, and to LGBT community. 
Wonderful question. Okay, uh, Diego, I think we have two minutes. In order to respect our time, I'll allow you to, uh, to just wrap up things. So um, remind people of our uh, next events. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Mazdak. That was great. Um, we are all looking forward to seeing you the next, uh, the part two and three of the webinar next week. And also see you again for the meditation practice. So yeah, this is uh, our next event series. They're, they're gonna be posted on Facebook. So just just make sure you are you check every now and, and then. Um, and thank you very much. Thank you, thank you every, everyone for coming. If you, if you wanna get more familiar with Queer Tech, wanna be a volunteer, wanna collaborate in some, in some way, you can reach out to Guy or Naufel um, or find, us, find our Facebook page uh, and, and reach for us. And if you're interested in, in having this uh, webinar in your company or you think it's some, someone you know might be beneficial, uh, do not hesitate to reach Mazdaq. I'm sure that he's gonna, he's, he's gonna be very happy to share all this with you. Mm -hmm. So thank you very much again and I'll see you all soon. Thank you Mazdaq, thank you for everyone who thank attended you, here. Diego for monitoring that and uh, My pleasure make a copy of all the chats so that people uh if they have shared any feedback we can we will address address them thank you everyone for your uh participation uh go out in the world and do the way uh, good uh, good work and i'll see you tuesday at noon for part two uh webinar and stay safe stay well and take care uh, good care of yourselves Thank you, merci, bonne journée, bye bye.